Hello folks, it is December 3rd, it is Thursday, and this is the Daily Word in the Crisis. I have a kind of a confession to make today. There are things that I have not directly addressed in recent days, because I haven't had the heart to deal with the fight that comes back at me as a result. I got tired, and I genuinely feel that the Lord called me to back off for a bit in order to press deeply into Him, and I needed that. Unlike virtually all other prophetic voices that I know of who wear just one hat, I've been fighting on two fronts. I am both a local pastor fighting in the midst of a pandemic to build up a congregation powerful enough to affect a city and the nation, and I'm seen as a prophetic voice called to fight for the wider world. And so I'm kind of stretched. So today I'm coming out of my cave a bit, and here we go. The United States... My nation is a great nation. Great nations begin as great ideas. The United States began with great ideas. Although because of cultural conditioning, its founders failed to understand the implications and the applications of some of the great ideas they wrote into our foundation, as is evidenced by their their participation in the institution of slavery, they nevertheless were possessed of a great vision rooted in Christian principles, as they understood them. Their vision was to establish a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Thus was born our democratic republic. We elect representatives to public office, who then exercise authority to govern by carrying out the will of the people for the sake of the people. At least that's the way it's supposed to work. Thanks to the ideas of freedom that were sown into our culture by the Founding Fathers, the United States has become the most prosperous and powerful nation the world has ever known, and therein lie, therein lie the seeds of decay. In the development of any great empire, power structures emerge. People then seek positions of power within that structure. Over time, power seduces and corrupts until the need to obtain and exercise power begins to eclipse genuine concern for the needs of real people. Increasingly, over time, the ruling elite become divorced from real awareness of the needs and the welfare of the people that they're called to serve. They forget the government exists to serve the people, not the people serving their government. And so power struggles emerge between opposing parties. Corruption sets in as the temptation to cheat a bit for the sake of of advantage becomes too great to resist. The temptation to lie, the temptation to distort the truth, becomes a real concern. I'm sorry, overcomes. (laughs) The temptation to lie or distort the truth overcomes real concern for the welfare of the governed. I've watched the testimony of witnesses In recent days, I've watched the testimony of witnesses before representatives of the legislatures of three battleground states. And now, uh, based on the sworn affidavits of those witnesses, I can only conclude that this election has been profoundly corrupted in the struggle for power. These people aren't lying. They go to jail. These are sworn affidavits. In the struggle for power, Assassinations begin to happen as a means of removing obstacles to power. Those assassinations can be literal, or they can be assassinations of character or standing and position. In the form of trumped-up charges, false accusations, we've seen a relentless campaign of trumped-up charges and false accusations over the last three and a half years. It's not about justice. It's not about what's right and true. It's about obtaining and exercising power. Lip service may be paid to serving the people, but that's not the truth. As an empire moves toward collapse, as every empire inevitably does, those in power and those desiring power begin making outrageous promises of what the government will do for the people. They do this in order to exert influence and maintain control. How many realize that at the beginning of the decline of Rome and at the height of Rome's power struggles and corruption, the majority of the population were receiving free food in a massive welfare program, and all the while being entertained by the gladiatorial games in the arena to keep them happy and distracted? Does that sound familiar? It should. Rome eventually fell, 
as has every great empire the world has ever seen. In virtually every case, the causes are the same. America is now at a turning point. While we are a different sort of empire than many that have gone before, America is indeed an empire with worldwide influence and economic dominance. And we've been decaying from within. The cause is simple. God's principles never change because he never changes. As Joshua prepared to lead the people into the promised land to conquer it, the Lord told him to be strong and courageous, and then he added this in Joshua 1, 7. Only be strong and very courageous, be careful to do, be careful to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you, and do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. God promised real power and success, as well as prosperity, to his people if Joshua would be careful to maintain his devotion to the Lord and be careful to walk in God's laws and principles. Fail in that, and neither victory nor prosperity could be sustained. Deuteronomy 6.1 Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the judgments, which the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you, that you might do them in the land where you're going over to possess it, so that you and your son and your grandson might fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life. Listen, that your days may be prolonged. O Israel, you should be careful. You may say you should listen and be careful to do it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Well, God was saying that he would give them a great empire, a promised land full of richness, if they would be faithful to walk with him. Fail in that, and the implication is that the blessing would dry up and prosperity would not come. So long as any empire adheres to the values and the principles of its founders, when those values and principles reflect the will of God, that empire will endure. Depart from those, and the nation becomes vulnerable to leadership that's out of touch with people. Vulnerable to leadership consumed by the quest for power and the struggles that come with it. Government then becomes abusive, exercising power with no real consciousness of the actual impact on people. I know what I'm seeing and sensing for my country. Biblical morality has been discarded, even in the churches. Where our founding fathers once spoke of God without shame and incorporated statements about God and the Bible into the founding documents, we now push God out of schools, courtrooms, government deliberations, and and even many jobs and businesses. We now have wholesale abandonment of biblical morality. Two Democratic presidents in my lifetime have brought adultery into the White House. One was impeached for perjury in relation to it. We've legalized infanticide. We have governmental approval of lifestyles God clearly opposes, and now our nation stands divided, mired in what I believe to be the deepest crisis over the future of the nation since the Civil War. The power struggle currently underway reeks of corruption, depending on what is depending on what is done to ensure transparency in the process of adjudicating this election and how it all turns out, half of the nation will never again trust our electoral processes. We are, in so many ways, <laughs> I've lost my notes, hello, yeah, I'm a human being. We are a mirror image of Rome at the point at which their power began to wane and they became vul- became vulnerable to invading armies. Weakened from within, increasingly, They became prey for those who wanted to bring them down. But there is hope. Listen to me. There is hope. I'm believing for victory. Prayer initiatives have sprung up around the nation and even in other nations where many people care what happens here. They've they've messaged me. They've told me. People concerned for a return to devotion to the Lord are crying out. People who care about holiness are falling on their faces in repentance for sin. People who care about what is best for people according to the laws and principles of our God are pleading for more time, for more of our mercy. God is listening, but perseverance is crucial. I don't believe God is finished with America. 
We have been the world's greatest funding engine for missions around the world for many decades. This needs to continue. We've stood as a strong friend to Israel. This needs to continue. We have been the land of opportunity because of the freedoms guaranteed to us under the Constitution, even in the face of our lingering problems with racial tension, inequality, and prejudice. <clears throat> this needs to be preserved. This is not the time to lie down and give up. This is not the time for despair. It's time to intensify our efforts in intercession. This is more necessary than ever for the next several weeks. The greatest battles <coughs> the greatest battles, are never won when you feel up, strong, and full of energy. They're won when you think you're spent. But you dig down and you call up the deep strength. Know that your enemy is exhausted too. Pray for and trust God for a supernatural intervention for the awakening remnant to rise in power and authority. God bless you all. Have a great day.